Hello, this is Max Rock. I just want to talk to you about this tool here, which is Power Keys for Revit. Um, there's a 30 day free trial. You can click on this and, and, and download it from this site here. Um, it does a few things. You need to do a setup for it. And the setup that you really need to do is you download and install the actual program itself. There's a video on the setup as well. Um, you've got to choose where you want to locate the actual program. Oh, sorry, the, where you want to store your files. And then the last thing that you need to do on it is to actually merge some of my hotkeys with your hotkeys. Now, because I'm very conscious of not interfering with other people's workflows and things like that, a lot of my keyboard shortcuts are either three letters up to five. You can only do a maximum of five letters in your keyboard shortcut. Otherwise, I suppose you're actually just typing letters rather than a keyboard shortcut. So I've tried to use longer keyboard shortcuts so that I'm not interfering with any of the ones that you're doing for calling some of the commands that I'm doing through here. So just be aware of those through there. So let's just jump straight into the, the keyboard things through here. So um, there are a list of all of the items through here. And uh, if you just touch on the space bar on the gray bar, it'll actually let, list it out straight away just coming through um, a lot of this is focused on just doing some of the tedious stuff that you get to do most of the time when you're either in from even from preliminary design right up to, to when you're doing the construction drawings and everything so um, there are things like uh, L spacebar, which is what I'm using for DL instead. I just find I can easily remember L for line, but DL, I just find I get DL, DE. It just, even after all this time, I just find it, it mentally just stops me. I just want line, L, space, bang. So I had the wall, space, bang. Uh, 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 R for door, space, bang, because I'm using D for something else. N for a uh, window which I can just bang in through there like that so uh, the next one's D I can actually just hit on there and I can bring the dimensions all the way through or I can just go D onto there sorry D spacebar it is but it's just sorry D um, and spacebar I find you just wallop the spacebar with your thumb so you're not even thinking about doing it now another one that I've got through here is you click on the actual text itself here and type CO spacebar and it types COS. If you've got a longer piece of text through there, you can type COS spacebar, and you can actually have simple notes that you can actually add. Now I can do, uh, I should actually demonstrate that sometime, but I haven't got a demonstration. It's something that I'm developing further, but um, it, you, you're making a specific GUI for something, and uh, a lot of times you've got to build those GUIs specifically for what people want. So I see it as a solution, but it's not one I'm going to use straight away. Anyway, uh, so I've got some uh, simple abbreviations that you can just extend to, down to. So we basically jumped all the way through here, apart from another one which we'll do through here, which is just G spacebar. So this is a region, so I, I've just typed G spacebar, and then I've clicked two points, and it's done my region for me. Now this, uh, I two things I just want to draw your attention to. Let's just do region as well. I'm, I'm just going to type region here. It normally defaults to the single line. So I've got to go here, one, two, three, four, five, and then come up and go OK. So that would be one method to doing it. Another one, uh, if I just type the region, I would come across to the rectangle then I would click two points, then I'd have to come up and finish it off through there. So that's only three keys, whereas I just type G spacebar, and you see it defaults automatically to the rectangle one that I want, and it does it straight away. Because a lot of mine, I'm actually just doing re the rectangular ones anyway, the best times. So that's that first bit coming through there. Um, I just want to talk about a couple with the text. So with text, I've just got T spacebar, into there, T spacebar, and uh, I can just write some text through there, or I can go T1, and I can do a single arrow and some text, and it comes through, T2, and I can do an arrow with an elbow, and then write some text into there, or T3, which is, oh, you guessed it, it's a curved one, so we just do that. Now, we can also do some symbols, so if I click on that, uh, click on the blooming thing there, uh, now what's wrong with you? Right in the middle of something. It's sulking. Um, ah, now let's get to here and then go DIA spacebar 
and you see it goes to diameter. I think that was because I'd only stretched that out a certain amount, so it comes through there. So another one that I can do there is DEG, and it brings me uh, DEG spacebar, and it would do the symbol. So you see DIA spacebar for the symbol DEG um, spacebar. So if you've got some suggestions, be keen to hear about ones that you do. So very nice to actually do that. These are so these are just your standard text ones, but they're not really that productive. I've got ones to do with arrows, but I'll come back to them. The next ones are for text for the model. So if I just type NN. This is one of the things you keep on seeing this one flashing. Um, I just want to highlight here. So if I type T1 uh, or anyway T1, enter that, nothing happens. Uh, only works when I'm actually in an active uh, Revit window. So a lot of these commands, they're not going to do anything outside. So suddenly they won't work because while I'm jumping around here, I've gone out into a different environment and uh, it, it's not going to trigger it. So I've got to come make sure I'm in here and I was going to go NN. It pops up this dialog box through here. So this is where you store, you want to store your notes. So it automatically goes to the same location. So I'm going to use this one here. In fact, uh, no, before I do that, I'm actually just going to cancel out of that one. I'm going to come into my text file. These are all these and uh, I'm just going to go and save it that save. So um, I'm just going to go into here again, go NN, and I'm going to type pipe. And here's my pipe symbol one through here. I'm going to go apply and go click, and it just puts it in there. I can use N1, and I'll just go and use my duck one through there, and I'll click on that one. And I'll, oh, now this one, I've got to do the arrow first. I keep on forgetting about that. And then I do that. Now you see that the symbols come in there, and that symbol, although the symbols are here, in the note, they don't come through here. Now the reason for this, and this is why I use Notepad++, which is a free ed text editor type thing. But inside the Notepad++, um, plus plus, you can it's got an encoding tab. Normal text files have UTF-8, but if you have it as UTF-8 bomb, the symbols will come in automatically. This is trying to do the symbols. You can see it's got the degree symbol here, but it's got this weird A. So um, if you save it as UTF-8, and the other thing which I use it for is it's got a free spell checker. So you can add technical words into your spell checker all the way through. What I find is as I get older, I'm mistyping and I'm spending a lot of time inside my text box just moving around trying to get to the bit that I want to re-edit. I find now I can actually pre-write my notes here and we can say uh, 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 storm water uh, pipe two, four, three. And then I can, uh, I can't use degrees in there so I've actually just got to grab that degree symbol because um, I haven't got anything set up to actually do the symbols inside here. Three degrees. Um, uh, to, to, so, so we can actually just go control save. So I've added a note into there, straight into here, and I'll go N3 at this point in time. We go into the pipe, and there's my note straight away. So I can just bash that in there, and there it is. Beauty. So this is fine, and these are just little fiddly notes like that, but if I actually just go NN and come up into here, and let's just go into the arch two, and let's just take that one there. This is quite handy for if you've got big bulky notes coming through here, or maybe you've just got general notes that you want to add in the preliminary set of drawings or do something like that. So you can have them, so you don't have to spend all your time typing. You can just chuck these notes in. They can be spell checked all the way through here. If there's odd little technical terms that you're using all the time, you can add those into your dictionary so that they are ready to go. So on this one here now, um, another thing with this is if I highlight this text now, I can go A1. And it gives me an arrow to the left. A2 removes the last arrow. A3 gives me an arrow to the right. A2, now I think I've got day. It doesn't like doing A2 twice in a row. Now I can do A4. Oops, sorry, you've got to highlight the text. A4, not doing it. Stop doing it. There we are. And we can do an arrow that side. A5, we'll do an arrow on the other side. Another A4 will give me A4. Um, 
and if I want on the other side now you notice that these arrows on the right hand side are set to the top automatically I hate them when they're set to the bottom but if I want to move it to the bottom I just type a6 so instead of coming up here and fiddling with these fiddly little bits up here I'm just looking on my screen where I'm actually writing my notes and doing this. So when I'm doing a detail, a lot of the times I do a detail and then what you actually do is you take a note and you, you copy and you just bring it down and then you add something and you modify and stuff like that. I can actually just do this in here. I can write three or four notes that I actually want to do and then just blast them in and they're all written beautifully. And, uh, and, and, and if there's any errors and stuff like that, I can edit them back here and just blow them away through here. So I find this whole process a hell of a lot faster to use, and it does save me a lot of time. Now, um, along with that, I can actually go into a schedule. I'm just going to blow this away. We just blow. So that's that. I've tried to adapt the one which I've got for um, the notes to schedules, but it sort of acts a bit weird. When you're in here, it immediately assumes you're writing text. So if I type SN, which is the command for writing a schedule note, it just types SN and it does weird things. But if I go space and then SN, it does the pop-up. So I can then take the night. I'll just take a bit of a note through there. Now I can choose which cell I'm going to drop that into. So I'm going to drop it into that one, and it'll drop it in. So although I triggered it in here, I can drop it in somewhere else. It's a bit weird this one, but it works. So who cares? If I the other way that I can do it, as long as I select one of the C, D, E, or any of the the letters along the top. I can type the SN through there. I can do the selection that I want, and we're just going to do that. If this is highlighted, because I'm in text, if you just press the Enter key. Um, no, that's not working there. Enter. There we are. Yes, it is. And then you can choose which cell to put it in, and it will just go and chuck it in like that. Now, if the cell is formatted so that it's only taking uh, uh, numbers, it will just do it, do it nut. It's just not going to do it. Also, if some of the um, uh, cells are based on the type of the thing that you you know you can't do things, it won't change them. But comments is usually one that you can just do free typing in anyway. Now there is a comment that somebody made, if like when I'm doing the NN stuff through here, and I select something and apply and do it and add that note in. They said, oh, it's a bit like a uh, uh, keynotes. A keynote has got to have an element of which it's got to uh, be associated with. Uh, with these notes, it doesn't have to be associated. You can just chuck them where you want and, and, and whatever you actually want to do with them anyway. And again, once you've got them there, you can say, oh, I'm going to make them whatever size they are, etc., etc." So um, uh, they're not. They're just chucking straight straight notes in. But and, and, and this is one of the things that there's some great add-ins that you, you know out there that do some really good stuff. But they're to do with BIM. But what I actually find inside Revit, and I would mainly be taking things from uh, preliminary through to developed and, and construction details. So I would be ma mainly working in the documentation side of things. I still find I'm doing a lot of basic drawing things, and that's where the tedium comes when you've got to do 15 keyboard shortcuts just to do one command, you know, like the region one. You know, you type your shoot region for your region, it puts you into the line mode, so then I've got to come up to the ring and come into here, then I've got to go and do it down here, then I've got to come back up to here again. You're suddenly thinking, it's just one bloody thing, why can't I just do it? Sorry about swearing. Um, so I, I do find find it tedious these things so what I'm trying to do with a lot of the, the, the with this tool at this point in time is focus on taking this tedious stuff out of there it's again like the symbols the symbols um, for the symbol for diameter is uh, you hold down the out key and type 0216 if you're on a normal keyboard, if you're on a laptop, you can't use the keys at the top. So you can, you've actually got to go and use the Windows character reference to put them in. So uh, that's not handy. You know, whereas here, I can actually just come into here and just go uh, DIA spacebar, and there you are. What a doddle. So a lot of the focusing is, is on just getting, just doing the, 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 the tedious stuff that you need to do to get your documentation and your stuff right. Now, 
in here I've got the free tool at the moment there's a course which I've actually got on Udemy uh, which you can take which will allow you to go and build your own and do all of these things yourself a third thing that I've got down here as well is um, I've got to do the video on it yet but um, hopefully it'll be happening soon is that uh, we can do an ROI so let's just simply look at that part of the thing and this I think is something important when we do that original region so we go region we go up to the line or we go up and we change it from line to rectangle and then we come down and draw the region then we go up and say okay let's just say that took us 12 seconds to do when you've actually got the one where you type g space bar and you just click two points and you're out of it maybe that takes nine seconds so there's a three second difference now um so if you've got your hourly rate and you work that out as your rate per second so that hourly rate could be the hourly rate that they pay you or it could be your hourly rate that you charge out to um uh that, that you're charged out for for work that you do so it doesn't matter which one it, you, you actually use you can choose that you can plug in whatever number you want and we should put a color into that no that looks ugly um, Z, let's just make that um, uh, yellow because it stands out um, this is the number that you do so what we can actually do is you're suddenly saying well okay then when we're doing that when we're doing it manually it's taking us 12 seconds so if we do it 17 times a day this is a bit silly in a way it's not you won't do that but you could be doing some text commands 40 times a day so let's just look at the text one let's just say you're doing a text command and it takes you 40 day 40 uh, seconds to actually write a note and you've got big notes and short notes and things like that but on average it, you, you know some of them are going to take you a minute I actually find I think a bit so maybe a little bit too much and then by doing it by grabbing the notes and just chucking them in there it takes you 20 seconds you do that 20 times a day 20 times a day is not unrealistic but what this does is so when you're doing that here's the text note one through here when you're doing it um, manually with this hourly rate or this second rate so you're saving about 20 seconds sorry one's text note 40 20 so you're saving about 20 seconds so once 11 you, 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 you're spending about 11 dollars doing it a day normally and you do it automated you're doing it 556 so you're saving half your time so that's what we're doing so that's fine in a day but then in a week you're saving 27 dollars in a month you're saving 110 dollars and in a year you're saving one thousand three hundred thirty four dollars that's on one command that's on just on writing a text note and just doing it so you've sped it's by speeding yourself up twice as much so where do we get the number and the frequency every time you use a keyboard shortcut inside here and uh, let's just type something through here da, 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 da. so let's just do the NN and we're just going to go duct and we're going to go one of those apply bang it in there so there we do, we've got that one in there if we actually look inside uh where are we looking documents and in our um power for revit you'll see there's one called frequency any and it's telling you how many times you've done this since you've loaded it up now you could blow all of these numbers away put a date in there control 2 oh no it's not working okay then so we just put say uh, the whatever we are 20 Feb 2022 and so we can say from this day this is how frequently we've done this so you can actually measure how much you've done so after a month you just divide this by you know uh, four fives or 20 and then you can get how many frequently times you do it in a day or you can do it from a month up to a year or something like that so you can see that some of them you don't use that often and then other ones you're using quite a lot um, so um, once you've got these numbers in here so this is factual numbers this is a number of times you've hit that key now some of them you might have hit them a number of times because you're still trying to get a hang with the key so I wouldn't say do it in your first first week or two weeks once you start getting familiar with the tool then start looking at those frequency tables and you can actually just use this sheet so you'll down be able to download this 
And what you can do is you can time how long you take to do this one. You can then time how long you take this day. So you can have somebody standing with a stopwatch seeing how long you take you to do it. Or you could do them both about three times. But each time you do it, you get faster and faster. So that's not a really fair way of doing it. So what you can do is that you can actually see how much money you save. So this is based on four different uh, ones. Some of them, like the L space bar that I use, it isn't going to save you any time at all. It just mentally saves me a bit of overhead. I don't have to think L, oh, D, L, oh, yeah, okay, then I've got to do that. Um, and so it, it just saves a little bit of mental overhead. So these are just four fast keys that I've actually got that I think are quite uh, one's uh, visibility graphic. We haven't gone into that one yet. But what it does is that you can add up. So you can say in a day you, it takes you that much. So in a week it's going to be five times that much. In a month it's going to be uh, four times that much. And in a year it's going to be 12 times that much. So that gives you the amount of working. So at the end of the day on this, on, on all of these combined, these four keys of which there's a certain amount of efficiency inside them, it's you're saving. It's costing you eight thousand to do it when you're doing it in the traditional way. And when you're doing it with the automated way, you're now only spending three and a half thousand. So less than half the time that you're doing it. So therefore you can quantify how much money you're saving. So you can show a return on investment. Now, there are other ways of looking and this is another one that I think is quite important. When you're typing notes all the time and you're getting error, and everybody's writing different notes or they're about the same thing. If you've got a set of standard notes that you're just chucking in all the time from standard files, you end up with a lot more consistency. So therefore the checking and the back editing on a set of drawings is a lot less than if you've got everybody writing freestyle. So um, having standard notes and having a lot of the ones so that they and, and after a while other people coming in and using those notes, they read how those notes are written and they start stylizing their notes in the same way so that their doubt becomes. So you end up with an enhanced accuracy and it's quicker back checking. It's taking you less time to actually type out all of those notes because you can just grab them. You might at the beginning spend a, a bit more time searching for them. So you're going to have these things. Now those are hard to measure, but this particular one here, I can give you an accurate measure on how long it does to do it. Now when I actually measured some of these, I, I've tested these two or three times myself. This detail note one is one that I actually have done. This is a, a, a thing. Now this is where it comes in to its play from the point of a return of thing. If you can save your hourly production costs on that and they got a fixed fee for doing that work. So that fixed fee stays the same. If we're going to design a house for you of a certain square, square meter area, square foot area, something like that, and we're giving you a fixed fee of, of whatever, or a percentage cost of the thing or whatever, but it takes us less. We're reducing our time here by 50% on some of the little, these are just trivial things, but over the time they accumulate. And uh, so, um, you know, and, and the nice thing with this frequency table that we've got through here is that the frequency is based on, uh, you, you might be doing using some keys in preliminary stage, you might be using other keys when you're doing a specific thing like you're doing uh, the plumbing and drainage side of things, which you're not doing that frequently if you're an architect or anyway, you're using heat blows if you're not, if you're a, 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 a building services. Um, and, and so depending on which part of the project, on one you might be using the notes an awful lot, on another side of the things you might be using some of the other ones. So this is where you've got a variation on those sorts of things. So it, it, you can measure your productivity from just due to, from these simple things that you're doing. So this is something that I'm very excited about this particular tool, is that it speeds up. Another one that I'm exploring at this point in time, I'm still not totally sure uh, with it, uh, if we come through, well, well there's two that I quite like. One of them is I room visibility graphics. One of the things that I do is I ended up with my set of drawings, I printed them all out, and suddenly there's these uh, room separator lines coming in. And they only happen on a couple of my uh, things. So sometimes I've got them in the view templates, and sometimes I haven't. I'm tweaking around with them, and I've suddenly realized my room separator lines on them. So I can actually type RR1, RR1. 
and it automates itself. Great. And I can another one is that I would be using room objects, so the room object itself to actually capture a whole lot of data about that particular room. So I would actually be able to push some stuff on when I was doing some asset capture stuff. So using that tool, like you can work out how much paint area you've got or how much window area or how much wall area or floor area, etc., etc. So on that one, I might want to show the room uh, uh, objects and the other times I want. I like sometimes I want to maybe because of where I'm tagging, I may want to move the location of the, of the room. So I've got another one there, which is RR2. Oh, now you see what happened there. Um, I'd selected that. I've just got to go unz. Uh, I had actually got that selected so RR2 will turn them both on and turn them both off so this just automates those fiddly little things to do and then RR2 just toggles back again so it just turns them back on and back off and then RR3 does one it does reference and then the other one does RR4 does the um, uh, interior fill so I split those ones up for the ones, the, 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 the worrying thing with this is if we just go into visibility LM and go into lines, one of the concerns I actually have with this is you see this counts down so many um, to find the room separator ones. But if somebody else has two or three extra lines on here, they've got to do a different count. So I've got to find a way of being able to allow people to set that so that they can count down how many to come to switch off the one that they want. Um, and that one is a little bit finickety. So it's a, they, these ones here are just a, in beta stage for set, setting at the moment. Another one that I actually have at the moment is, is that I'm doing uh, on the preliminary design set of drawings is that I've got this one and I'm just going to type OG. Uh, yeah, I've got to make sure I'm in here. OG. And then, did I get that? OG select an element then selects an element i can actually just go reset okay and it resets something but i suddenly want to highlight something to the client or in a certain uh, element so i can just type og i can select an element it then goes and selects all elements in that view so that i can just go through and highlight a certain object that i actually want to do through there okay apply oh sorry and there oh sorry i just did the lines oh sorry um do, 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 og look at that i'm not using it that well og select uh sometimes cancel og and there uh uh the i ended up not selecting that okay and now it's gone uh, to red. So that's an easy thing that I can come very nearly at the end of the thing. You're just tweaking a few of your um, objects just to highlight them as there's something you specifically want somebody to take a note of. Or again, you might be at the demolition stage or something, and you might have an element, something like a sink. Is it good enough to reuse, or, or you know, can you take some photos of it, and then we make a decision whether we're going to replace it, or whether uh, we, we're going to um, just keep with what we've got as an existing. So um, a handy tool uh, again to quickly go through, and that is really you're just going into there, and then you select that saying select all exit or all, all equivalents, and then you're going into the next part there of override the graphics. So this one just pulls them all together and just gets you from point A to point C, where you just need to do the tweakings, and it does that automatically. And again, once you finish with that in a particular view, you can actually just come into it then and just type OG. And uh, there might be something, and uh, and then just go reset. Boop. Nice. So it, it, it saves the wear on, 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 on what you're doing. So at this point in time, uh, I, I'm hoping to get uh, some of these other, I'm hoping to get the uh, calculator out um, ready. I think the calculator may be there already. Um, but I do want the video to do. So the vet, the, the calculator is there. Um, that's for free. So please download it and use it. When you actually download the trial version through here, um, uh, one of the things which I'm 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 noting uh, uh, with the uh, free one 
if we come into the free trial is that if you've got uh, you've got 30 days free trial on the things if you e if you found something useful and you've got some suggestions to make email me here let's get the button and uh, if it's uh, with your suggestion and I'll give you another 30 day free trial um, uh, and then after that other 30 day free trial if I've updated that I'll advise you of maybe one of the things you've suggested uh, might be included in which case it, it, it may improve some of the things you're doing so please please try to of uh, that um, so from this point of view uh, you, you know, it's a productivity tool that you can see uh, tangible measures from your productivity. And you see, this is one of the things. On here, for these four functions, and they're ones which actually make you go a bit faster anyway, they're ones which are a bit fussier to do, um, and you can time yourself. So these numbers or whatever they are through here, they can be realistic numbers because you've actually got the facts from your frequency tables and things like that, and you can get somebody else to time you how quickly you can do it with both methods. And the other thing which I find with this is that you don't have as much mental overhead. You don't need to remember the three or four commands. And this comes back to a conversation I had with somebody when I was still manually drawing, and they were drawing just moving into CAD. And I said, well, what's the difference between manual drawing and drawing in CAD? And they said, well, with manual drawing, it's like a body memory. It's like riding a bicycle. Once you've learned to ride a bicycle, you don't even think about it. It just goes. It's like drawing a line. When you're drawing a line, you've got a thing. You're drawing the external walls of a building or something like that. You lightly draw the fence, and then you thicken in where the actual line is between two points. And then you go through and you draft the rest of it. But it's sort of a body memory. You just know what you're drawing and you just and, and your your body does it he said when you actually come onto a computer you've got to draw a line now how do i draw a line i've got to type l for line or l i n e and then press enter and then i've got to move my mouse to the point of where i want the start line to be and then is it orthogonal or is it um, any free um, point as to where it is so do I need to do an at 300 or, uh, by 200 or something or so suddenly all these other commands come in front of what you're trying to do so you're trying to design this building and this is what I actually find I find I think quicker than I draw and uh, when I was first starting out with the CAD stuff I ended up with a lot of keyboard shortcuts and things like that to actually get to the point where I could draw as quick as I think and this is what I find in Revit. A lot of these keyboard commands are actually having to come up and find things uh, along the top here as part of a, a, a command. The command only takes you, to, you, you might need four uh, keyboard shortcuts to actually complete a command. Or you might need two keyboard shortcuts, three mouse clicks, and then a click up on the ribbon or two clicks on the ribbon. So I find all of this jumping around very, very tiring to do. So what I've tried to do is, where possible, I've tried to combine them into one keyboard shortcut like G space bar for region, which just brought me a rectangular one. When I've got to do the other ones, but most of my regions are actually just squares, so um, uh, that's fine. If you've got to do the other ones, you've got to do it the other way, and that, that that's perfectly reasonable. When you, um, uh, but but just getting me into into where I'm doing and to stop to stop this interference with my mind as I'm actually trying to do. And one of the frustrations which I get is that I find I, I get so distracted by doing the little action that I'm doing at the moment that I forget the next thing that I'm doing and I move on to the next topic that I'm doing and then I have to come back and I say, oh, I forgot to do that, I forgot to do that because my mind was going too fast for those sorts of things. So having these things setting up so that they work in with your own workflow. Now these, I must admit, they're very personal to me. They're ones that I found are irritating, so obviously they're ones that I worked on. So this is why I actually want some feedback from other people to say, what are the ones that you've got difficulties on? And maybe the setting and the key settings that I've got are not quite the ones for you. And so I really want some feedback on that sort of stuff so that I can see if I can start modifying it into a useful tool. And I think that was a, a, a thing which I found with moving from CAD to Revit uh, inside AutoCAD, you could you could string a whole lot of things commands together onto one keyboard shortcut to make one action happen. 
Whereas in Revit, you can't. And, and it's sort of like the fundamentals. You know, it's, it's some of the add-ins are absolutely fantastic. Um, but some of them are, are, are just very, very awkward. You know, uh, and it's, it's like the, the one here for the schedules. Um, you, you know, as I said, the, the best thing since sliced bread is being able to export and import from Excel and just doing it all in export in, in thing. The fact that you can only work on one individual cell at a time inside a Revit schedule is frustrating. But, you know, just because of the way the database is set up, that's, that's the nature of the beast. But being able to bash something into any of them with an SN and then just uh, choosing a note and being able to uh, put it in there uh, that's a that's a pleasure you know I, I do find when I've got a whole list of things in here and I'm looking down trying to find which one that I want to pick and then I find thing is that wording quite as accurate as what I want and it's quite small even when you got it full page I still find it quite small and if you make it too big you can't read half the text um, so um, maybe that's another thing with getting to be an old wrinkly so uh, these are maybe these are um, uh, for people with special needs so maybe most people won't use these tools <laughs> anyway uh i hope you find it interesting i do hope you try it uh, the other thing i can't re recollect if i i did say it, it loads when you actually do the load it comes up here you when you do down in here there's an uninstall it just strips it off your computer so if you find it doesn't work for you not a problem you know thing so you, you just try as many tools and what works for you and what makes you flow this definitely is my beginning as where I come from when I'm actually doing things. One of the ones I was thinking of uh, for things, you know, now um, chaining commands, I don't mind looking at chaining commands, a few commands to make the region. So there's region, it moves it from one thing into another. But I, I, I wouldn't be doing a region and then suddenly putting the dimension thing onto it to try and cobble four or five of them together. It doesn't work. They break halfway through anyway, and it never quite meets your needs. So I'm after little um, function things. So if you are keen on uh, the tool, um, uh, please give it a go and uh, give me some feedback. I'd, and uh, even on the even on the YouTube thing. So uh, I'd I'd love to hear whatever feedback people had to uh, improve a product to, to make other people life a lot easier i just like taking taking the tedious stuff out so that you can get back to the jo joy of drawing and the joy of uh, sorry of drawing and designing in a way and and the drawing is is part of the pleasure as well you know like you spend an awful lot of time fiddling around with oh i've got to readjust my dimension lines and uh, uh and, and and do some tweaky things on those and uh uh you, you know that uh, oh that disappeared the other one uh, so uh, if you found the useful as well on the YouTube one can you please give a thumbs up um, uh, that would be appreciated thank you very much